Hello, friends. It's time for music class. Let's wake Pete and see what he's up to today. I think he's extra sleepy. It's very cold outside. So let's do our very best singing to get him to wake up. Here we go. Pete, Pete, join our song, join our song. Come on out, come on out and tap along and tap along. Let's listen. Do we hear any ticking in Pete's house? I do hear him. Let's take a peek and see what is Pete doing today. Looks like he's hiding in a cave. I think he's trying to keep warm and stay out of this cold, snowy weather. We're going to talk today about some animals and what they do in the winter time. Whoops, I think Pete is running out of energy sometimes when Pete is tired. I have to wind him up. Let's wind him up today. Now he's ready to tick. See if you can tick along with Pete. Make sure your hands match him, not too fast and not too slow. And freeze. Good job. Let's try this one. This is a fast tempo. See if you can match Pete. Go just like him. The next if I go the opposite direction what will happen to our tempo it's going to get very slow isn't it see if you can tap slowly just like Pete and freeze very nice job we'll let Pete take a rest in his cave over here we're going to read a story, one of my favorite wintry stories. It's by an author named Jan Brett, and it's called The Mitten. And we're going to add some music to the story. And we're also going to add some pictures. I'm going to put my big boy here. I'm going to need a very big mitten. I bet you've all been wearing your mittens lately. Okay. So as I tell the story, we're going to sing a little song. And you can help me sing along. So this is called The Mitten by Jan Brett. Once there was a boy named Mickey who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Mickey wanted snow white mittens. And finally, she made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. Can you see it? does mix in with the snow, doesn't it? It's very hard to see. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. What a silly mole. He's curling up right inside that warm mitten. So I have a mole, and we're going to put him in the little mitten too. Just my little tiny mole. And I'm going to put him, we'll put him in over here in this finger. And we're going to sing. The mole climbed into the mitten. The mole climbed into the mitten. The mole climbed into the mitten. To get all toasty warm. And we're going to sing that song a couple of times. So as you learn it, you can help and sing along a little bit. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten, and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. So we're going to need to add a rabbit to the mitten. There's my rabbit. Make room for him. We'll put him up here. So this time we're going to sing. The 
rabbit climbed into the mitten. The rabbit climbed into the mitten. The rabbit climbed into the mitten to get all toasty warm with the mole. So now there are two animals in the mitten. Let's see what happens next. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day lo looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they may room. Looking like it's getting a little bit crowded in the mitten. So let's add our hedgehog. Hedgehogs are prickly. We'll put him up here next to the rabbit. So this time we're going to sing. The hedgehog climbed into the mitten. The hedgehog climbed into the mitten. The hedgehog climbed into the mitten to get all toasty warm with the rabbit and the mole. Can you remember all those other animals? Let's see if you can remember them as we add new ones. We have to remember the old ones also. It's a lot to think about. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. So we need to make room for the owl. Where shall we put him? Maybe over here? Are you ready? You help me sing. The owl climbed into the mitten. The owl climbed into the mitten. The owl climbed into the mitten to get all toasty warm with the hedgehog and the rabbit and the mole. Oh, oh my goodness. So many animals in the mitten. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. So in comes the badger. Let's sing about the badger this time. Here we go. The badger climbed into the mitten. The badger climbed into the mitten. The badger climbed into the mitten to get all toasty warm with the owl and the hedgehog and the rabbit and the mole. Oh my, can you see who's coming next? They give us a little clue. See if you can guess who's coming next into the mitten. Oh! <gasps> It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. Let's see if we can find some space for the fox. Here we go, you help me sing. The fox climbed into the mitten. The fox climbed into the mitten. The fox climbed into the mitten to get all toasty warm with the badger and the owl and the hedgehog and the rabbit and the mole. Oh. Who's coming next? Can you see? This is getting ridiculous, isn't it? Oh my goodness. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed as tightly as could be, but what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size, but Baba's good knitting held fast. All right, we're gonna have to put the bear in. You ready? Here he is. You help me sing about the bear. The bear climbed into the mitten. The bear climbed into the mitten. The bear climbed into the mitten to get all toasty warm with the fox and the badger and the owl and the hedgehog.
hedgehog and the rabbit and the mole. I see one more little friend coming. Surely we'll have room for this one. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. Here's the little tiny mouse. Let's add the mouse, you ready? The mouse climbed into the mitten. The mouse climbed into the mitten. The mouse climbed into the mitten to get a toasty warm with the bear and the fox and the badger and the owl and the hedgehog and the rabbit and the mole. <gasps> she doesn't even fit, does she? She just sit on the bear's nose. Oh no, the bear. <gasps> tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous, oh, 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 chow, sneeze. The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. Whew. On his way home, Nikki saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten, silhouetted against the blue sky. Now we can see it, can't we? As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new mittens. Isn't that a silly story that all of those animals squeezed into the little mitten? The animals in that story were taking a nap, weren't they, inside that warm mitten? Did you know that some animals take a nap for the whole winter? You know what that's called? You ever heard the word hibernate? Some animals hibernate. They find a warm place to snuggle up during the cold winter months. And usually they have to eat extra food before they go to sleep so that they can last all the way until springtime. That's a long time to go without eating. So we're gonna sing a song about some animals that hibernate. And I'm gonna show some pictures and maybe you can help me name some of the animals that hibernate. There's many different kinds but we'll just name a couple of them. Do you know who hibernates, who hibernates, who hibernates? Do you know who hibernates? It's a, what is it? A bear. Very good, bears hibernate. Let's try another one. Let's see if you can find this animal. This one kind of hides. This one looks like it's in a little cave. Do you know what that one is? Let's see if you can name that. Maybe sing along with my song. Do you know who hibernates, who hibernates, who hibernates? Do you know who hibernates? It's a frog. Do you see him hiding in the cave? It's a frog. Oh, what about this one? See if you can name this one and help me sing my song. Do you know who hibernates, who hibernates, who hibernates? Do you know who hibernates? It's a snake. Good job. I have one more. This is a tricky one. This one is sleeping upside down. Do you know what kind of animal sleeps upside down? Kind of hanging? Let's see if you can guess. Do you know who hibernates, who hibernates, who hibernates? Do you know who hibernates? It's a bat. He's all tucked inside his wings, hanging in the cave. Great job, everybody. Hey, we're gonna sing a song about a hibernating bear. So for the first part of the song, the bear is going to be sleeping. So we're gonna sing very quietly. And some of us learned the word we use for quiet in music, it's an Italian word, we say piano. So if it's quiet, shh, we sing piano. If it's loud, we use the word forte. Forte means loud. So for the first part, we're gonna sing shh, softly. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Little bear, little bear, you will sleep all winter. You will sleep all winter, little bear, little bear. Great job. Now we're going to use forte. 
it's time for the bear to wake up. We're gonna pretend it's springtime. So this time we'll use our louder voices now that he's awake. You ready? And you sing too. We take turns. Here we go. Are you waking? Are you waking? Little bear, little bear. You will wake in springtime. You will wake in springtime. Little bear, little bear. Nice job. Maybe you have a drum at home. Maybe you made a drum or you have a drum, but we're gonna practice playing piano and forte on our drum. So when the bear is sleeping, we need to play piano. So I need to do very soft, gentle taps. So let's see if you can tap on your drum very quietly, piano, ready? And we'll still sing in our piano singing voices also. Here we go. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Little bear, little bear. You will sleep all winter. You will sleep all winter. Little bear, little bear. Nice. Now let's make it forte. So this time you can use a bigger, stronger arm to play on your drum. We never bang on the drum because that's not very nice to listen to. But I am using a bigger, stronger arm as I play. Kind of a heavier sound. See if you can play forte on your drum. You ready? And we'll keep that beat. So we have to go a little bit quicker. And we'll use our forte voice. and see if we can play piano and forte on some different instruments. So if you have any other instruments at home, why don't you get those out too? Because you can practice with some of yours, even if they're not the same as the ones that I have. So let's try the sticks. And if you don't have any instruments, you can listen to my sticks. First, I'm gonna to try to play forte. Do you remember what forte is? Forte is loud. And again, I'm using a big, strong arm to tap my sticks. Okay, let's try piano. So shh, I need a gentle tap. Yes, so I can do piano. I can play softly on the stick. Let's try the wood block. Let's do forte. That's nice and loud. And piano, let's see if I can do a gentle shh. That's hard. It's a little hard to do that on the wood block. I have to concentrate and think about that a little bit. But I can definitely do piano and forte. How about, do you remember this one? The maraca, do you have something to shake? If we do a big shake, a strong shake, we can do a forte. And if I want to do piano, I have to shake very gently. Yes, nice job. And I have one more today. I brought my little tambourine so I can do a big clap with my tambourine to make it sound forte. And oh, Job. We're going to sing a song about a sleeping grizzly bear, and this one has a surprise in it. So we're going to pretend that the grizzly bear is sleeping in his cave. So we're going to need our tiptoe feet. Let's stand up and see if we can find some tiptoe feet that are piano and soft. Shh. Okay, let's see if we can find tiptoe feet. So shh. walk on your tiptoes. And listen in the song for a surprise. See if you can find the surprise. You ready? Shh. Grizzly bear, a grizzly bear is sleeping in a cave. Grizzly bear, a grizzly bear is sleeping in a cave. Please be very quiet, very, very quiet. If you wake him, if you shake him, he gets very mad. Did I surprise you? 
There was a big forte at the end, wasn't there? Can you pretend you're a bear? Get your bear claws out. Maybe you could make your feet very noisy at the end. Maybe do a big jump and put your bear claws out. Let's try that together. So this time, you know what the surprise is going to be. We're going to get forte all of a sudden, like a surprise. And there's a fancy word for that, too. We learned the Italian words piano and forte. If you want to be suddenly loud, you would be subito forte. So this time we're going to be subito forte. We're going to be suddenly loud. So make your feet tiptoe first. Shh. Piano, here we go. Grizzly bear, a grizzly bear is sleeping in a cave. Grizzly bear, a grizzly bear is sleeping in a cave. Please be very quiet, very, very quiet. If you wake him, if you shake him, he gets very mad. Whoa, that was a big surprise. Great job, everybody. We're going to listen to a song, and this was written by somebody over 100 years ago. His name was Joseph Haydn, and he wrote something called the Surprise Symphony. And kind of like the Grizzly Bear song, there's a Subito Forte, a big surprise in the song. So we're gonna listen to it. I'm also gonna show you on my iPad so that you can see the orchestra playing and that you'll see the conductor who uses his arms to show the instruments when to play. And he even kind of shows them how to play. He shows them all sorts of different gestures. So we can watch the conductor and listen to the orchestra playing and see if you can listen for that surprise in the song. surprise, that subito forte that the orchestra played. Pretty cool, huh? We're going to say goodnight to Pete now. He's ready to hibernate himself. So let's sing our goodnight song and let's sing with a shh, piano singing voice since he's ready to go to sleep. Here we go. Good night, Pete. Good night, Pete. Good night, Pete. It's time to say good night. Good night, Pete in his house. And goodbye friends, I'll see